Hey guys, what's up? It's Kendrick Dish here. I want to talk a little bit about this Peak Design travel bag. Uh, I got it in November. I was part of the Kickstarter. I bought the whole kit, you know, the little travel bags, the packing cubes. I bought everything. I did a video, a first impressions video, but it wasn't a full review because I hadn't used it. I hadn't really traveled with it. I hadn't put it through its real paces. Um, but now I've done the, I've done, I've done that work and I got some stuff to report on about this bag. It's not really, this isn't really like a full review. I just, I think that I got enough of it done in the first impressions video and what I'm going to talk about in this video. So with the two videos together, I think that's basically a full review. Most of you, if you're watching this, are probably familiar with this bag. Uh, it's Peak Designs Travel Backpack. Uh, it's a 40 liter bag. It's a 35, it's a 40, it's a 45, depending on how you got it set up. Um, there's a lot to like about it. It's it's a freaking genius design of a bag. There's there's so much to love about it. So there's some stuff I don't like about this bag. In fact, there's some stuff that makes me probably want to sell this bag. I, I haven't decided yet, but there's a deal breaker. I want to talk about some of the things I like about this bag first, and then we'll talk about the things I don't like and maybe what's the deal breaker. I don't have time to get into everything, but some of my favorites the cleverness of some of these designs, like the fact that the, underneath here, the rain cover slips and you just pull, pull the rain cover out and it's tucked in there. I haven't used it yet, but I like how clever that is. And then that kind of just snaps back down. I love this expandable pocket that, that takes it from 35 to 45, I guess. Um, and one of the great things I like putting in here in this particular pocket is once we open up this pocket, then this becomes a lot more, you get a lot more room in here. One of the things I like putting in here is actually a gimbal. So the gimbal, you, you get the, you lie the gimbal flat and it actually fits in here pretty well. So a lot of backpacks don't have room for a taller gimbal. This, I believe this is the, uh, the Weeble Lab, which I'll probably do a video about this pretty soon. Um, but I have taken my Ronin M in here as well. And so that is a really nice feature of this bag is that this pocket is so expandable. Now, uh, one of the things I really love about this bag is actually that the, the design, this, this is pocket here, the, the big pocket on the front opens up and you can actually roll this storage part you unzip this internal thing you can actually just make this disappear down in here and you can access all your stuff from from the front i think that is a really remarkable feat because what along with the side access here and the back access which is how you access it most of the time they've allowed you to set this bag up however you want it's super customizable and you can access your gear from from the front, from the side, from the other side, and from the back. The only thing they didn't give you the ability to do is from the top or from the bottom. I went, I carried this thing for a week, uh, or I, I took it on a trip to uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, and we crossed over to Sweden. And I didn't use it as a daily carry bag, but I definitely used it as a, as a travel bag, uh, as a carry-on. That was with the middle camera cube. Now, the, the camera cubes do have, what's nice about them is they clip in, in, in spots to keep it from moving around. I think that's really nice. And then you can also use the camera cubes outside of the bag. Uh, you can like leave this. If you just use it as a travel, you could leave the camera cube back at the hotel, put, you know, use it as a daily carry or, or use it as, um, put the smaller camera cube in and then put, you know, shopping souvenirs or do whatever it is you do. There is so much innovation in this bag and that's what I was so excited for. I bought it on the Kickstarter and I really liked it, but there are definitely some downsides. Um, I made a little list here. One of the downsides that I found is that because the laptop is in this bag and it's up against your back, it creates a very rigid back and it's just not very comfortable to have this flat computer against your back. And I just felt like it was like having a board on my back. It didn't conform very well to my body. It didn't, um, 
It didn't move with me. It just felt like I had a flat, heavy ass board up against my back. Now on a, several years ago, another bag that had a similar like layout with the, with the computer right up against your back, I actually had to carry two laptops. And so I put them both in there. And what happened is they got a little, they went like, they, they were in the bag like this. And then one of them got like this and the, and the, the bag kind of went against my back. It curved. It ended up cracking the screen on one of the laptops. So when it's up against your back and it's kind of conforming to your back, I feel like there's a danger in, in the, the computer flexing and breaking the screen or causing some damage of some sort. I didn't have that experience with this bag, but keep that in mind that it could happen with, with, with the bag up against your back with, you know, with the up against your back so much. Now, kind of the, in a similar point, what I just basically found was that this, these, this very innovative system for storing the straps, which if you, obviously you already know all this or you wouldn't be watching this video. Um, this super innovative hiding mechanism, like it just didn't provide that much comfort. It just wasn't very comfortable. It just wasn't very comfortable. I don't know how else to say it. <sighs> Sorry, Peak Design. It wasn't, it wasn't a comfortable experience to carry this on my back. Now, one of the, the, the primary reason it wasn't very comfortable is not even, not even the padding or the computer against my back. It's actually these backpack straps. These backpack straps are, are very, very thin. And there's just not much foam in there. There's not much padding in there. And like I said, I had this thing fully loaded down with gear and it was really heavy. And I was wearing this thing on my back through airports. And like, first off, when we flew from Atlanta, we went to New York and then we went to Toronto and then we went to Copenhagen. So I had two layovers. I rarely have layovers, but that was multiple layovers. And I had like each day of travel was a full day getting through airports, getting on and off planes. It was just uh, like, you know, when you have days like that, you know, you really put in the bag through its paces. And this thing was heavy and uncomfortable and it didn't work on my shoulders, didn't feel good on my back. And it actually caused some pain on my shoulders. Now, I think one of the, one of the other things was with the, with the backpack being so flat against your back with the computer in there, it didn't have any up here at the top. It didn't, it was kind of separated from, from your body a little bit because I am pretty tall and I like the bag kind of tucked up on me. I found that the waist belts uh, didn't help that much. I think it would have helped. I, I, I tried it and I just didn't feel like it was doing, doing much, especially these little, this little clip on here. This, this, this as a lash, as like to wear the belt and that's, that's it. Like where's the, there needs to be a much wider padding for Let me, let me show you a comparison. This is a mind shift gear uh, bag that I'll probably be reviewing soon. I don't, I haven't had it very long, so I haven't used it much, but look at the size of this belt. It is so much larger and so much more padded. If you look at the, the thickness of these two, if you can look at the thickness of this. This is probably at least a half, half of an inch. This is maybe like a quarter of an inch, or maybe this is three quarters and this is barely a half. But there is significant difference in the, the, the quality and the construction of this hip pad and, I, and this. And you know, also you wanna start making some comparisons. This is an inch of foam on the back here. This is some massive foam padding on this think tank bag. And this one, I can already tell you, is a, a lot more comfortable. And it's got the load lifters that I'm talking about. It's got an adjustable harness system for changing how, if you're taller, if you're a taller person or a shorter person, you can change how high this uh, shoulder harness is. And so um, it's definitely uh, a worthwhile com comparison. I think it being uncomfortable is a deal breaker. I don't think I can travel with this bag since it's not comfortable to use. And there are so many things I love about it, but it's just not worth carrying around if it's, if it's so uncomfortable. So 
anyway, let's talk about a couple other things that I, that I don't like about this bag or that I just found, okay, a little bit iffy about this bag. The, um, you know, one of the ways that you can shrink the, shrink the bag is to snap, is to, is to snap these, um, I'm forgetting how to do it. You snap these together here and you just kind of squeeze them and s snap it in. And it kind of tucks in the bag like that and it, it gives it a curved profile which is kind of nice. Um, I kind of did like that. But for me, I could not get the, that's where, that's, by the way, that's how you get it down to 35 liters. And it, and it, I think it definitely makes an impression on the, uh, it makes it look a whole lot smaller, especially trying to get through security or something. But I'll tell you this, they didn't stay snapped. I guess maybe I had so much stuff kind of packed in here or whatever, but it would just randomly go pop and unsnap. So this, and, and also the snapping mechanism, it's a little bit difficult to actually kind of get it snapped. Um, it just can be a little tricky. Uh, not, too, not too bad, that's not really a problem, but um, I think that could be worked on and improved a little bit more in a, in a version two. The camera cubes are really nice, and I liked them. I liked how versatile they were. But if you're using this thing as a, as a camera bag, and you're in and out, you're out in the field, you got, you're pulling stuff in and out, one thing I wanna talk about with this camera cube is actually that there's, between the zipper and the edge of the bag, there's a lip. There's a lip right here, and I think they did that on purpose to help you keep your gear from kind of spilling out maybe, but it created another problem for me, which was when it's fully loaded, it sometimes it's, it's hard to get your gear up and uh, in and out of the bag through around the lip. So like you're trying to pull it out and this lip is covering it and you're trying to pull it out and you got to pull the lip back and then pull the camera out. So it's, it just became a little bit, just, a, it's a minor knit. But when you're trying to move fast and, and your, your bag is tightly packed, you got a lot of stuff in here, and this lip is like an inch overhang, you get, it, it can be a little challenging to pull your camera out. So I just thought that was worth mentioning. It's not really a big deal, it's a minor deal. But I like the, you know, all these clips that come with it so you can get it in there. It's really actually nice. So, um, there's one more thing I want to talk about with this bag. It, it, it kind of picks up scratches and dirt a little bit easily. So if we look at the front of here, you can kind of see this is like a few, a few trips of travel. I really only had it for about six months. Haven't used it nearly like daily or anything, but I've used it on a, a one week trip and I used it on a, a, a three day trip. Um, and I've used it around town a little bit to take gear to local shoots. But you can kind of see that it's, uh, it's got some scuff marks. Now what I wanted to do on, on video is I wanted to just, I wanted to see how well those scuff marks come off. So I haven't tried this yet and I just thought, well, let's do it for the audience and see what happens. So I'm just gonna do it real quick and then kind of show you what the result is. I think it's gonna come, I think it's gonna work. Okay, some time has passed and I think it's, it's pretty much dry. So let's take a look at the scuff marks. Um, it looks like it's picked up quite a bit of little bit of dust from the, the towel itself. Um, and that will just go away with a little bit of time. Um, I've kind of rubbed on it and it's been slowly coming off. But it looks like the scuff marks, if you look kind of closely, it does look like the scuff marks have kind of gone uh, gone away. So that's because this material is, is kind of, it's almost like a plasticky kind of material. And so I had a feeling it would kind of wipe off pretty well and clean pretty easily, but it does pick up scuffs and scratches quite easily. And so just keep that in mind. Um, not, a, not a big deal, but I actually think that I normally always go black. I always go with a black bag, but 
I really think that I, I dig the green one. I haven't seen it in person, but that sage one that they also sell, the other color, I think it looks cool. And I also like that it has the leather looking patch right or the leather looking label right there. I wish this one had a, a brown label right there, like a, a, a brown leather one right here. That would look super slick. But um, I, I don't think I can use this bag for camera gear. I might still be able to use it for some other kinds of travel, but I didn't buy it for other kinds of travel. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. If you guys have some comments about that or you want to chime in as well, or if you're interested in buying it off me, let me know. But um, I'm probably just gonna throw it up on eBay. I'm not gonna make that decision like in the next couple of days, um, but I'll probably, I'll probably know by the end of the summer uh, what I'm going to do with it. So anyway, that's, you know, a bunch of thoughts on the Peak Design travel backpack. Uh, the rest of the camera, the rest of the cubes that came with it. I love all those things. The cubes, except what I pointed out in this cube. I like the packing cubes. I like the, the tech pouches. I like the wash pouch. I'm using all those things and I'm real pleased with those. So it's really just, it's really, it really comes down to that I think this harness system and the comfortable, the comfort, comfortability, comfort level of this bag is just not there for heavy duty, long-term, big ass travel. Peak Design, if you're listening to this, on version two, I'd say make it comfortable. Step one, make it comfortable. All these gadgets and designs and innovation here and there and lash points and all sorts of cool stuff isn't any good if I don't want to wear the bag because it's uncomfortable. So don't hate the messenger. <laughs> I know this could be a controversial thing because everybody loves Peak Design. They're, worth, they're, they're, they're amazing design company and their bags are pretty great. I just had some thoughts about this one that I wanted to get out to everybody who's uh, thinking about this bag and or just thinking about bags in general. So anyway, that's the Peak Design travel bag. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, if you like cameras, if you like software, I've got, I've got some stuff I want to talk about with some software and some workflow. Um, if you like gimbals, I want to talk about this Weeble Lab. I want to do, uh, I had some trouble with this, man. I had some real trouble with it. So I want to get into that a little bit. Um, anyway, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.